Hello everyone, today we are going to discuss about the oscillators. So what is basically an oscillator is? An oscillator which is a circuit which basically acts as a generator. So generating the output signal which oscillates with the constant amplitude and constant desired frequency. So oscillator does not require any input signal. So without providing the input signal, it is going to provide the output. Okay. So an external device uh, which is going to, uh, if I take it as an alternator, which is going to generate a sinusoidal voltage at a desired frequency of 50 hertz in our nation, but electronic oscillator which can generate a voltage of desired waveform at any frequency. So an oscillator can generate the output waveform of high frequency up to gigahertz. So in short, I can say an oscillator is an amplifier which uses a positive feedback and without any external input signal, it is going to generate an output waveform at a desired frequency. So here we are going to discuss about this oscillator. So when I say oscillator, Without an input, the output will continue to oscillate whose frequency depends upon the feedback network or the amplifier or it may depend upon both feedback network or else the amplifier. Such a circuit is called oscillator. Okay. So, when I say oscillator, two conditions uh, are required to work, oscillate, uh, to work the circuit as an oscillator. That condition or the criteria, we call it as a Parkhausen criteria. So what are those criteria? two criteria? First one is the total phase shift around the loop, around the loop of a circuit as a signal proceeds from input through amplifier and feedback network back to the input again, completing a loop. So it's precisely zero degree or 360 degree or of, of course, the integral multiple, multiple of 2 pi radians. So what they are telling is the total phase shift around a loop, around the loop of a circuit, it should be 0 degree or 360 degree or it might be a multiple of 2 pi radians. Next, the second criteria is the magnitude of the product of the open loop gain of the amplifier and the mag uh, feedback factor that is beta uh, it should be unity in the sense the product of A into beta. A is the open loop gain, beta is the feedback factor. So the product of these two factors, A and beta, it should be equals to 1. Then only we will be getting the sustained oscillation. So there are three different conditions are there. That is A into beta greater than 1, A beta less than 1, A beta equals to 1. So what happens whenever A beta greater than 1, A beta greater than 1 means we are going to get the growing type of oscillations. As the time increases, the oscillation amplitude, it is going to increase. Uh, whereas A into beta less than 1 means you are going, I mean the oscillation, it is exponentially decaying. In a sense, the amplitude, it is going to decrease as the time increases. Whereas to obtain the sustained oscillation, the condition is product must be equals to 1. That is A into beta, it should be equals to 1. We will be getting the sustained oscillation means of a constant amplitude and uh, constant amplitude and the frequency. So last session we have already seen FET based phase shift oscillator. So today we are going to discuss about the LC tuned amplifier uh, oscillators. So the oscillator which uses elements that is inductor and the capacitor LNC to provide to produce the oscillations are called LC oscillators. Okay. So the circuit using these two elements that is L and C is called tank circuit or oscillatory circuit which is an important part of LC oscillator. So this uh, circuit is also referred to resonating circuit or tuned circuit. So these oscillators are used for high frequency range from 200 kilohertz to few gigahertz or else I can say oscillators utilizing the transistors that is the amplifier in the amplifier section I may use the active devices like FETs or BJTs 
with the tuned circuits that is along with your FETs or BJTs along with the transistor you are going to make some extra circuit that is called LC tuned circuits or else in the, in the case of crystal oscillator we are not going to make use of any tank circuit we are going to make use of some material that is crystal as feedback elements okay so these are used in the frequency range of 100 kilohertz to hundreds of megahertz or I can say a few hundred kilohertz to several megahertz okay so they exhibit higher Q than RC types so higher Q factor we are going to get in the in case of ELC okay however LC oscillators are difficult to tune over the wide ranges and crystal oscillators operate at a single frequency. Crystal oscillator, it is going to operate at a single frequency. At a particular frequency, it is going to operate. Okay, whereas in the case of tuned uh, LC, we can um, we can uh, obtain the frequencies for a limited range. Okay, uh, limited range. Yes. So. So let us see the ELC tuned oscillator. Two commonly used configurations of ELC tuned oscillators are known as Colpitt's oscillator and Hartley oscillator. Of course, in both the oscillators, we are going to make use of the inductor and the capacitor, and it will be a parallel uh, combination, parallel combination of uh, inductor and the capacitor. So capacitor will be connected in parallel with the inductor. But the thing is, how this is how these two components are selected. Depending upon that, these two classifications are done. That is Colpitts and the Hartley oscillator. So both utilizes parallel LC circuit connected between um, collector and base. If I consider active device that is amplifier as by using the transistor, then this LC tank circuit will be connected between the collector and the base terminal of the transistor or else if I am making use of the FET, field effect transistor, then the tank circuit will be connected between the drain and the gate of the FET. So, with a fraction of tuned circuit voltage fed to the emitter, that will be fed to the emitter of the transistor of the BJT or else source of the FET. So, this feedback is achieved by the way of capacitor divided in Colpitt's oscillator. So, we can say in Colpitt's oscillator, we are going to make use of two different capacitors and one inductor and by way of an inductive divider in the Hartley circuit. So, we can say here Hartley, it makes use of two inductors and one capacitor. Colpitt's two capacitors you can remember like this C Colpitt stands for it is going to make use of two capacitors in series which is connected in parallel with the inductor and Hartley Hartley CL is a this Hartley we are going to make use of two inductors which is connected in parallel with the capacitor and then it will be fed back to the input again. So in both the circuits resistor R models the combination of the losses of the inductors, load resistance of the oscillator and the output resistance of the transistor. So this is a two commonly used configuration of LC tuned oscillator. The first figure shows it is a Colpitz oscillator. You can see here this particular configuration, uh, this particular oscillator make, make, making use of the BJT, collector, emitter and the base and uh, across the collector and the emitter we are going to make use of one R and um, and here this is a tuned circuit that is two capacitors are there and one inductor so two capacitor and one inductor means um, it is a Colpitz oscillator okay so how these are connected way this is connected see the one end of this junction it is connected to the collector and the other end is connected to the connected to the base okay connected to the base of the transistor next same here also in second figure which depicts the Hartley oscillator Hartley there will be two inductors and one capacitor connected will be connected in parallel and the one end is connected to collector other end is connected to the base so in detail let us see in the next circuit practical oscillator circuit let us state let us state so before to that, we need to know the, what is the frequency of oscillation in both the oscillator. So, if the frequency of operation is sufficiently low that we can neglect the transistor capacitances, the frequency of oscillations will be determined by the resonance frequency of the parallel tuned circuit that is known as the tank circuit 
because it behaves as a reservoir for the energy storage. So this the Colpitt's oscillator will have. See, Colpitt's means two capacitors connected in parallel with the inductor L. So capacitors in series means this is the formula C1, C2 divided by C1 plus C2. So the frequency of oscillation omega naught which is given by 1 divided by root of L into C. These two are the tank circuit components L and C. But there is only one L so no problem with the inductor capacitor. Two capacitors in series so it is like C1, C2 divided by C1 plus C2. Similarly, Hartley oscillator, we are going to make use of two inductors in series that is connected in parallel with the capacitor, single capacitor. So, inductors in series means it is L1 plus L2 into C. So, this is a two formula you need to remember to solve the problems or else uh, this is given in terms of angular frequency. You can also write in terms of EF. What is the equation? F is equal to 2 pi F. Uh, omega is equal to 2 pi f. So, omega will be equal to 1 divided by, sorry, f will be equal to 1 divided by 2 pi into root of L C. Here also same thing. But here, two capacitors, here two inductors. And then, yeah, this is a practical case of the uh, Hartley oscillator, that is transistorized Hartley oscillator. We are going to make use of a VGT over here, NPN transistor. And here, see this particular uh, circuit we have already seen. This particular circuit we have already seen. It is a common emitter configuration amplifier, common emitter configuration of the amplifier that is emitter terminal is grounded and which will be which is made common for the input and the output and these two are the coupling capacitors at the input and the output side and this is a bypass capacitor and this RE is acting as a feedback resistor. We know what is the importance of this uh, feedback resistor also. Okay, and here at the collector and in between the VCC and the collector, we have used the radio frequency coil. So why this radio frequency choke or the coil it has been used is that is to isolate AC with the DC components, this radio frequency coil it has been used. So this is an amplifier section. As we know, oscillator consists of two different sections, two different blocks. One is a, in the feed forward path, we have an amplifier and in the feedback path, we have a tank circuit. So feedback is nothing but output, some part of the output it is given as the input, right. So in that feedback path, we are going to make use of the tank circuit. So this is a Hartley oscillator, so two inductors connected in series. Of course, the junction of these two, it is grounded, okay, and these two are connected in parallel with this capacitor and one end it is given to the collector and the other end is given to the base. It is connected in between the collector and the base. So this is a tank circuit. So when I use this amplifier, which is automatically, which is going to provide the 180 degree phase shift. So according to Barkhausen criteria for an oscillator, it should uh, produce a total phase shift of 0 degree or 360 degree or multiples of 2 pi radians. But if it produces 180 degree, it is not going to satisfy the Barkhausen criteria. So what arrangement we need to make is in the feedback circuit, tank circuit, we have to make the arrangement such that we are going to obtain the another 180 degree phase shift. So this tank circuit which adds another 180 degree phase shift. So how it is going to produce the 180 degree phase shift is, see in the tank circuit we are going to make use of capacitor and the inductor. So uh, when the, I mean the as the tank circuit gets the uh, uh, gets the external uh, DC supply, what happens? This tank circuit, uh, the the capacitor in the tank circuit, it charges and discharges, and thereby we are going to get the oscillations. Okay, so thereby we are going to get the oscillations. So. So, yeah, the LC tank circuits along with the transistor amplifier can be used to obtain the oscillators called as LC oscillator. So, due to the supply of energy which is lost, the oscillations get maintained, hence called sustained oscillations or undamped oscillations. Okay, undamped oscillations. So, for this, this is the output waveform we are going to get. We are not going to provide any inputs here. This we are going to get, obtain the outputs. So the amplifier stage which uses an active device as a transistor in the common emitter configuration which is shown in the figure. So the resistance is R1 and R2 which is going to provide, uh, which is going to act as a biasing resistance and RFC that is a radio frequency choke. 
its reactance value is very high for the high frequencies hence it can be treated as a open circuit and while for the dc conditions the reactance is zero hence causes no problem for the dc capacitors hence due to the rfc isolation between the ac and operation ac and dc operations is achieved so re is also biasing circuit resistance and ce is the emitter bypass capacitor cc1 and cc2 are the coupling capacitor so the common emitter for amplifier provides a phase shift of 180 degree emitter is grounded base and the collector voltages are out of phase by 180 degree as the center of l1 and l2 is grounded when upper end becomes the positive the lower end of course it will become negative and vice versa so the lc feedback circuit gives an additional 180 degree phase shift of 180 degree uh, necessary to satisfy the uh, oscillation condition and the frequency of oscillation is given by f0 is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi root of l equivalent into c into hertz uh, this much hertz so what is this l equivalent hartley means two inductors in series so l equivalent will be l1 plus l2 and the one condition we need to know that is hfe that is the feedback factor it must be greater than l1 by l2 ratio of l1 by l2 that is to satisfy a beta greater than 1 going type of oscillations if you want to obtain then uh, this condition it should satisfy then if there exists mutual con mutual inductance between l1 and l2 see there are two inductors will be there so there might be a case that um, mutual inductance it is going to occur so between l1 and l2 hence then hfe should be greater than l1 plus m divided by l2 plus m that means mutual inductance we need to consider mutual inductance is represented by m and the l equivalent at that time your l equivalent will be l1 plus l2 plus mutual inductance of due to l1 and mutual inductance due to l2 so it is 2 into m next is fet hartley oscillator that is your active device in the previous case we have used the active device as this transistor bjt here we are going to make use of the fet only that is a difference fet means the terminals will be drain source and a gate okay so the tank circuit will be connected between the drain and the gate rest all it is same common emitter configuration and this is going to provide the 180 degree phase shift and another 180 degree phase shift is provided by the feedback uh, tank circuit okay l1 l2 and the frequency of oscillation same formula it is 1 divided by 2 by root lc the l equivalent will be l1 plus l2 or else l1 plus l2 plus 2 into m that is m is m stands for mutual inductance so let us see the uh, problems few problems under this hartley oscillator So in a transistorized Hartley oscillator, the two inductances are two milli henry and twenty uh, micro henry. That is, L one and L two values are given, while the frequency is to be changed from that frequency is changing from nine hundred nine fifty kilohertz to two thousand fifty kilohertz. Calculate the range over which the capacitor is to be varied. So we are going to calculate the capacitance values. Uh, for the frequency range from uh, 950 kilohertz to 2050 kilohertz what is the capacitance value at 950 kilohertz and what is the capacitance value at 2050 kilohertz so we know the frequency of oscillation for the hartley oscillator which is given by the formula 1 divided by 2 pi root lc so here the uh, mutual inductance Uh, is not mentioned in the problem so we need not consider yum here so the l equivalent will be l1 plus l2 if the mutual inductance is specified in the problem then you are going to include uh, in the equation you are going to include plus 2m here plus 2m no need to include because it is not given in the problem so l equivalent is l1 plus l2 we know the two values l1 and l2 substitute that you will be getting the l equivalent as 0.0020 to henry okay so this is the l equivalent value now you can substitute this l equivalent value in the frequency of oscillation because uh, frequency values are given and l equivalent value you know so the unknown is now capacitance so first you can take the maximum frequency that is 2050 kilohertz for this frequency what is the c value so substitute all the values you'll we'll be getting c value as 2.98 picofarad picofarad 10 to the power minus 12 
and f is equals to f minimum f minimum is 950 kilohertz for 950 kilohertz what is the c value that is 13.89 picofarad so hence we can say the c must vary from 2.98 picofarad to 13.89 picofarad to get the required frequency variations very simple problem you need to remember what is the frequency of oscillation equation f is equals to 1 divided by 2 pi root of lc L is nothing but the L equivalent that is L1 plus L2. Then at maximum frequency calculate what is the C value and what is at the minimum frequency what is the C value you are going to calculate. So the next problem which is a uh, different kind problem it is. So FET Hartley oscillator circuit uses coupled coils in the tag circuit each with the inductance of 0.1 milli Henry and mutual inductance of 0.025 milli henry in the sense l1 and l2 value it is given it is 0.1 micro milli henry and here comes the mutual inductance part so m which is 0.025 milli henry so this circuit uses a fixed capacitor of 100 picofarad in series with a variable capacitor of 100 picofarad that is a trimmer capacitor which will be connected in series with the actual capacitor now what we are going to calculate is calculate the percentage change in frequency when variation of the uh, coupling between the coils is reversed trimmer capacitance set to zero that is we need to consider this trimmer capacitance as zero now and we need to calculate what is the change in the frequency okay change in the frequency so let us calculate because we know here l value we know l1 and l2 m value also we know we know the capacitor value also just we are going to calculate what is f here now um, assume see the, here is, there is a point of mutual inductance so first we need to consider assume one particular coupling direction for which that is we are going to assume one coupling direction so for that what is the l equivalent is l1 plus l2 plus 2m if it is in reverse in direction then this will be minus 2m so for these two conditions for these two coupling directions we are going to calculate what is f and thereby we are calculating what is change in the frequency so l equivalent will be l1 plus l2 plus 2m which is equals to l1 is 0.1 plus 0.1 0.2 plus 2 into 0 0.025 that is 0 0.05 so that will be equals to 0.25 milli henry so yeah, this is l equivalent you know c value it is given 100 picofarad 10 to the power minus 2 at substitute all this you'll be getting the frequency value as 1.00658 megahertz next assume the uh, coupling direction reverse coupling direction Direction of coupling is reversed. At that time, this will be minus 2m. L1 plus L2 minus 2m. So, you will be getting L equivalent value as instead of 0.25, you will be getting 0.15 milli Henry. Substitute this value in the frequency of oscillation equation. You will be getting the one more frequency value that is 1.29994 megahertz. Now, calculate the change in the frequency. How to calculate change in frequency? F dash, that is whenever coupling direction is reversed f dash minus f divided by f into 100 substitute all this value you'll be getting the change in the frequency value as 29.09 percent okay next is calculate uh, uh, in the second condition second question what they have given is repeat the same calculation by considering the trimmer capacitance change from 0 to 100 picofarad in the sense we need to consider now this trimmer capacitance which is connected in series with the actual capacitance fixed capacitance 100 picofarad actual capacitance trimmer capacitance is 100 picofarad which is connected in series so at that time you need to calculate the capacitor equivalent equivalent capacitor because we need to consider now cap trim capacitor so it is c into ct divided by c plus ct if it is connected in series this is a formula so at that time we will be getting the frequency as 50 picofarad now you substitute all these values and obtain the f value you will be getting 1.4235 megahertz okay that is for assuming one of the uh, coupling direction now suppose this coupling direction is reversed what is the change you need to make that is l1 plus l2 minus 2m so this will be 0.15 milli henry and uh, 2 pi uh, 1 divided by 2 pi root l equivalent c equivalent you will be getting the answer as you will be getting the answer as uh, 1.83776 megahertz okay this is the 
answer you are going to get. Next is you are going to calculate what is the change in the frequency. Change in frequency, same formula, f dash minus f divided by f into 100, which is equal to 1.8776 minus this much. We are getting the answer as 29.101%. This is a change in the frequency. And the last problem under Hartley oscillator. In a Hartley oscillator, L1 is equal to 20 micro Henry, L2 is equal to 2 milli Henry, and C is a variable. Uh, find the range of C if frequency is to be varied from 1 megahertz to 2.5 megahertz. Neglect the mutual capacitance, mutual inductance. So M is 0 here. So L equivalent will be L1 plus L2. L1 is given, L2 is given. You can uh, calculate the C values for these two frequencies, which is very similar to the first problem. First, you consider the maximum frequency that is 2.5 megahertz. Calculate what is the C value, 2.0244 picofarad. Next, you consider the minimum frequency that is 1 megahertz. For this, you calculate what is the C value, 12.6525 picofarad. So, the C must vary from this value, 2.0244 to 12.6525 uh, picofarad. Okay, that completes the Hartley oscillator. So from this, you can expect the theory questions from the Hartley oscillator. So what you can do is initially you can explain this um, basic circuit, Hartley oscillator, how this is going to, uh, sorry, you can uh, directly start with explaining this practical case, transistorized Hartley oscillator and uh, give the explanation and then frequency of oscillation equation is very important and then if they ask in terms of FET, then you have to draw this particular diagram or else this uh, that is active device considering that uh, considering PJT as the active device, then this one. Okay, and then you need to, if they ask the problem, um, three different problems I had explained here, you can um, refer these problems. Okay, and the next tuned oscillator is the Colpitts oscillator. So, Colpitts oscillator, tag circuit only there is a difference. The rest all explanation similar to the Hartley oscillator. So, the tag circuit instead of two inductors in series, two capacitors will be in series that will be connected in parallel with the inductor. Okay. Rest all this is a common emitter configuration CC1, CC2, bypass cap uh, coupling capacitor, CE is the bypass capacitor, RE is a feedback resistor. And R1, R2 is acting as a biasing resistance. Rest all it is same. RS, RFC is used to isolate the AC and the DC operations. All this. Okay. So amplifier which is going to provide 180 degree phase shift. And the time circuit which is going to provide the further 180 degree phase shift. So together it will be 360 degree phase shift. You will be getting the sustained oscillations. So the frequency of oscillation formula it is different now. Because we are going to make use of one inductor and two capacitors. So what is the equivalent capacitor value that we need to calculate here? So C equivalent will be C1, C2 divided by C1 plus C2. And HFC, HFC, Colpitts oscillator, it should be greater than C2 by C1. There it was L2 by L1. Here it is C2 by C1. That is to satisfy the uh, growing type of oscillation. That is A into beta greater than 1. Next, this is a FET based call, uh, FET Colpitts oscillator. So here just we are going to replace the uh, BJT by the FET and see the RO mark. Okay. So here frequency of oscillation is 1 divided by 2 by root L C equivalent. C equivalent is C1, C2 divided by C1 plus C2. And the problems let us see. So in a transistor, uh, Colpitts oscillator, C1 is equal to 1 nanofarad, C2 is 100 nanofarad. Find the value of L for a frequency of 100 kilohertz. So, you are going to calculate L value here. L is the unknown. Before to that, you need to calculate what is the C equivalent. C equivalent is C1, C2 divided by C1 plus C2. So, F is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi root L C equivalent. C equivalent, you know, the unknown is L. F is given 100 kilohertz. Substitute that, you will be getting the inductor value as 2.5355 milli hent. Okay. So, the next problem is find the frequency of oscillation. Direct problem it is. You know the formula F is equal to 1 divided by 2 pi root L into C equivalent. C equivalent, you know the formula C1, C2 divided by C1 plus C2. So, C1, C2 values are given. Even the L value is also given. The thing is you are going to calculate the frequency of oscillation. So, you will be getting the answer. Substitute all the known values. 
we will be obtaining the unknown frequency value as 1.925 megahertz and the last problem under the call pitch oscillator so this is using the fet so here we are using the active device as fet instead of vgt but the frequency of oscillation formula remains the same that is f is equals to 1 divided by 2 pi root l into c equivalent okay so the frequency of oscillation is observed to be 2.5 megahertz and oscillator uses L is equals to inductor value is given 10 micro henry, C1 value is given 0 0.02 micro henry. We are going to calculate what is the unknown value of C2. And if L is doubled, second question is if the inductor is doubled, what is the new value of the frequency of oscillation? So first write down what are the given values. First one, F is equals to 2.5 megahertz, L is equals to 10 micro henry and C1 is equals to 0 0.02 micro henry. So for the call pitch oscillator, we know the formula frequency of oscillation is 1 divided by 2 by root of L into C equivalent. So here C equivalent value is the unknown value because in C equivalent, we know C1 value, C2 value we don't know. So you are going to calculate C equivalent substitute L and F value, C equivalent value will be 405.284. So from this value, you can easily calculate C2 value because uh, C2 value substitute C equivalent in the formula. That is C equivalent is equal to C1, C2 divided by C1 plus C2. Here we know C1, C equivalent we calculated. C2 we can easily calculate. So the C2 value is 0.4136 nanofarad. Next is second question was you need to calculate the frequency of oscillation for the uh, what is the condition given if L is doubled that is the inductor value is doubled what is the new value of frequency. So L is equals to previously it was given L is equals to 10 micro henry if it is doubled means 2 into 10 so it is 20 micro henry and the C equivalent value we have already calculated it is 405.284 substitute these two values and obtain a new frequency of oscillation that is you will be getting 1.7677 megahertz. So that completes the pulpits oscillator. Thank you.